going, uh, going, Paul. Okay, hello, my name is Paula, uh, part of the Harrison Salmon Festival. And what we're doing here is getting people acquainted with the salmon, so coming on site. Also, the Harrison uh, fishers from Staelis and Scowlitz are also doing giving away a thousand pounds of smoked sockeye salmon. So we're sampling it here, and then we're sending people down to the Chehala store. If they want to buy some, they'll get a package for free. And we have a feast in the Charlie Longhouse today at noon. And that's with uh, Willie, Charlie, Kelsey, and their family. And they'll present their culture, the salmon history here, and their story of survival uh, based on the salmon. And then a cultural presentation of their dancers, including their sacred Sasquatch dance. Is the uh, Bald Eagle Festival. And it's on the 21st and 22nd of November. And it's down closer to Mission. Eight, eight uh, presentations. So it's a great way. There are thousands of eagles there in a month. So not to be missed. Yeah. I, li I live here, part of the festival. Yeah, he's one of our, our uh, exhibits. Yeah. <laughs> The Harrison, uh, or the Fraser Valley Bald Eagle Festival, has been going on for 20 years. And uh, there could be anywhere from two to 4,000 eagles that you could see uh, in another month or so, when it gets to their heights of all the eagles. You think it's the biggest of best in North America? Yeah, it's the, it's the biggest... In the world. Uh, yeah, of the world, of the bald-headed eagle. The you know. bald eagle, it's the biggest in the whole world. People love this bald eagle very much, especially the Americans. Yes, right. yeah, that, that's their national bird. And uh, one of the places at the Tapadera Estates is actually where you will have an eagle on display that uh, was, was uh, injured at birth and is, can't be released to the wild. So it's uh, 13 years old now and, and it comes up from Owl. So they'll be there on Saturday and Sunday at Tapadera Estates. It's just majestic. It's a huge bird. Um, and when you hear it, you'd think it was a small little bird. It's got such a magnificent little tweet that it has when they're talking or just making noises. It's, uh, you wouldn't believe it's the size of what it is. And it's a scavenger. It yeah. eats up all the dead salmon. So we like it because it cleans up the environment. Yeah. Hi there. Well, David Hancock is my name. I'm a, basically I'm an eagle biologist, but because eagles are dependent upon having good rivers with clean water that produce a lot of salmon, I'm actually also involved in saving salmon rivers. And this is one of our major projects is the Harrison Salmon Stronghold. It's about all these little rivers of which we're at one of the small rivers that runs into the Harrison. It's called the Weaver Creek. And our important element here is keeping these waters clean so they produce a lot of salmon. That of course means it produces a lot of food for people, but it also produces the food for the eagles, it produces the food for the bears, for the wolves, and so on. So I, I, as an ecologist, I want to see everything succeed, but you can't have anything succeed, even people, if we don't have clean water. So that's what the thrust of all our educational programs are, keeping the water clean. We welcome you here to Weaver Creek, uh, where there's three, not one, but three kinds of salmon spawning here right now. There's sockeye salmon, there's uh, chum salmon, or dog salmon, and there's pink salmon, or, or humpback salmon, and they're all right here beside us, right here on the river. Um, kind of neat to have three species of salmon. This is an artificial channel. This channel where their salmon are spawning is made by humans. They came in, brought bulldozers in, brought in the right kind of gravel. Because not only do the salmon need clear water, each species 
has requirements for certain size gravel so that they can dig it, lay their eggs in it, and then cover them back up again. So the three species of salmon that we cater to here all have similar needs of gravel size, but they have one other need. And that is, soon as these eggs are laid and they start to develop, once they come out of the gravel as little fingerlings, tiny fish, an inch long, they start to move downstream into deeper channels, like in, in the Chehalis River or in the Harrison River, and they leave this very shallow water. And because this is an artificial channel, there is not water in this channel all year round. There's only water here as long as the tap is turned on and the water comes bubbling up from the ground right here. And we will, turn, yeah, right there, those are the waters churning into here. Soon as all the fish hatch and they move downstream a quarter mile, then we shut the stream off. And there's no fish, there's no need to have the water running here. And we leave the water running if you, behind us, about 100 yards, is the main Weaver Creek, and we just divert the water back to its main creek, where there's lots of salmon in that as well. But the spawning opportunities, where they can lay their eggs and get fertilized, are not as good per square yard of, of river bottom there as in this artificially channel where we've made the conditions perfect. This will produce 10 times the no amount of eggs that will come out of the natural river. So it's, it's very productive. And then the other thing, we're ne this is the salmon festival season. The next thing we're about to have a month from now is the bald eagle festival. Because as all these salmon die, and every one of the Pacific salmon after they spawn, the carcasses die. You'll see carcasses already down along the river with their bellies up. They've, they've died during the night. All of these fish are going to die within the next week or 10 days. The carcasses normally go down all the rivers, flow down, get down toward the big Chehalis gravel bars on the Harrison. And that's when the largest concentration of eagles anywhere in the world happen. We get five to 10, perhaps some years, maybe twice that many. We just haven't been able to count them all. Um, so in a three kilometer area, we're going to get five to 10,000 bald eagles in, um, between the end of no or the uh, halfway through November and halfway through December. That's the peak period. So it's a very exciting biological uh, happening uh, to get 10,000 predators accumulating in a very small area. And so that's when we hold our Fraser Valley Bald Eagle Festival. So we welcome everybody to come to the Bald Eagle Festival this year, November 21st and 22nd. It's always the third weekend of November, so they can run this any year you like, and it's always the third weekend. You'll know when our festival is. We welcome everybody to the Fraser Valley Bald Eagle Festival. My name is David Hancock, and I'm an eagle biologist by training. Um, I'm a director of the Fraser Valley Bald Eagle Festival. I'm also a director and the founder of the Hancock Wildlife Foundation. And if anybody wants to go and look at eagles, they can go to their website on the web. Um, um, our, the, well, this is me, but our website is not up. Oh, yes, here's our website, HancockWildlife.org. And if they go to that website, they will see cameras on many different eagles nests and they get to see the life of an eagle the parent eagles feeding the babies building the nest it's an an incredible education to see these eagles because the cameras can zoom right in 20 power and look at just the eye of an eagle or a chick being fed or something uh, it's an incredible opportunity to, to see eagles so i'm involved with both the fraser valley bald eagle festival the hancock wildlife foundation and I'm also a director on the Harrison Salmon Stronghold, which is what this festival we're at today is all about. It's celebrating the salmon because the eagles celebrate the salmon as well because without good salmon, you can't have good eagles. You can't have good, healthy, fed people either. We are all dependent upon having good water to produce good salmon, to produce Think food for everybody. So this is 
the, one of the most important rivers in all of Canada, certainly for the production of salmon. It has the largest concentrations of eagles on it for the same reason. It's wonderful. That big, that big salmon is trying to come out of the water there. <laughs> yeah, that was a that was a big chum salmon who was just jumping up on the bank. Um, so. Um, the river not only produces good water, that what supports the good salmon, and that's why we have our huge, huge sa uh, eagle gatherings in November and December. We're doing quite well. Some of the salmon populations at the moment aren't doing very well, and we're very worried that they're not doing well because of the open Pacific. As you know, every time we send a gallon of oil or a, bar a ton of coal, to Asia, they send back all the pollution. They dump their garbage in the water and it comes to the Pacific coast. This affects the salmon very negatively. And this is the lowest return of salmon we, I think we've ever had. We're, it's very, very disappointing this year. There's so few salmon returns. So that's going to affect, well, they haven't been able to harvest them for the people because there's so few salmon out there this year. They haven't been able to get the, the in some cases, not even be able to get the food allotment for the native people. And of course, there's not going to be many carcasses for the bears and the wolves to winter on, and certainly not for the big gatherings of eagles. They're going to be really stressed to come up with um, enough food to see the eagles over the winter. So uh, the, the open Pacific is letting us down at the moment. It's got too much contamination. And if the open Pacific is contaminated, you know that the rest of the world is contaminated because you only got the open ocean contaminated because everywhere, whether it was the Thames River in England or the Nile River or the Yangtze River or the Indus, we're putting so much pollution and phosphates and so on down these rivers, it's contaminating the main oceans of the world. The negative part for raising salmon or raising the eagles or raising bears or feeding people, the negative part is comes from many different things. Uh, some of it's natural, like the sequences of the El Nino, um, the, the relative temperature of the water, but the big parts are what we as humans are doing to, to disrupt the ecology of of the seas, particularly the seas. So everything on land is dependent upon life in the sea. Every breath we take of oxygen, half that oxygen was produced in the sea. So if the sea was to die, which it's doing in many places, it's greatly going to affect all land animals, including humans, because we need that oxygen. So there's not only, um, we're not only negatively polluting the land, and that pollution ends up in the sea, but there's natural things like climate change, some of which is natural, but some of which we're causing it. We're changing the acid uh, in, in the ocean, and that's changing the productivity of, of creatures, and that means they produce less oxygen. That means the, the earth is getting warmer. We, we dump things on the land, the coal and carbon. These are all negative things that we're doing. So we have to be more respectful of the environment and we've got to get rid of coal and oil from using it we've got to convert which we can do china's made some of the biggest changes it's also the world's biggest polluter but along with north america but we just got to make changes that are working in the right direction and we can when you see some of the rivers that have come back again it's wondrous that the number of fish that they support and the deer and the coyotes and the eagles that, as well as humans. Good. Hello, my name is Maurice and this is my brother Justin. Hi, I'm Justin. This is the um, smoked salmon that we make. We go out to the river in Chehalis, the reserve Chehalis. We're um, from Agassiz. We clean our, we catch our salmon and we clean our salmon and then we cut it up into small strips like that and then we cook it over a fire and we let it smoke for four days over alder wood and then after four days it turns out like that and it's called candied salmon.
And that's what we call Indian candy from where we're from. This is our traditional way of how we do our salmon. We catch our salmon, we clean it, and we smoke it, like I already said, over the fire. And this is just our traditional way of canning or curing salmon. How you smoke it? How? Um, we cut it up into small strips and we hang it on sticks over alder wood and we let it hang up in a like a shed like and you let it smoke for four days straight and you keep your fire going constantly. And this is my brother, he's gonna do his interview now. I'm Justin Paul and I'm from Chehalis and we usually catch about a dozen of fish. Probably maybe like thirty, depends and we clean them up, then we lay them out in a big box, and we lay them out, and then layer them. Then we salt it, salt it to dash the salt, and then brown sugar. That's how we make it like that to cure our fish. We let our salmon cure in the. We let our salmon cure overnight in the brown sugar and the salt before we smoke it for four days and then after that it's cured and it's edible and then we just let people taste our salmon and let them enjoy it i'm from chehalis reservation this is our cultural way of preserving salmon for the winter season and the fall season so that way we have salmon through the whole year and this has been our culture for hundreds of years our ancestors used to do this stuff to cure the salmon and our generations just keep it going on and on from our families. Our people try to protect the salmon from poachers and we try to keep the fishing going without poaching our salmon so we can keep generations and generations going. Our people treat us so we can keep our salmon going and we protect our species of salmon but we still fish them and we keep it going through year round. Um, we keep our fish hatcheries going and we try to keep our nature clean so that way our salmon runs can stay healthy and come in without disease and they can spawn and make more generations for the next run of salmon. We try to protect all our saloos, all our creeks and all our rivers from chemicals and trees and other wildlife so that way there's more fish that can run through the season. And then. We have a local fisheries from our First Nations Reserve that protects our wild salmon so that way there's many years to come for our salmon. My name is Maurice Point and this is my brother Justin Paul. We come from the Chehalis First Nations and this is our home, this is our reservation. We like to welcome many people to our fish hatchery, the Weaver Fish Hatchery. We like to invite many people to come look at our salmon. I know they, a lot of people like doing smoke fish, eh? When it um, comes to fishing season, a lot of people make candy like that, or they'll make um, big chunks out of the whole fish. Yeah, sometimes they do whole fish. Some people like to do whole fish out of the salmon when they smoke it. And because it's already cured from salt and brown sugar, that you only smoke it till it's half smoked and then you steam it after. And then after you steam it, you like just eat it how you want to with like some butter or something. <laughs>